Hi folks, my name's Brad, and for those of you considering a Prius Prime, that is the plug-in hybrid version of the excellent Prius, uh, I'd like to offer you an alternative, and very likely it's a car you've never even heard of. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, you join me on this beautiful, sunny, yet uh, very snowy day in Canada, where I live. And this is the car I was talking about. It happens to be my 2018 Honda Clarity Touring. And well, many of you are probably going, well, what the hell is that? Because in my experience, and I've owned this car for two years now, uh, the biggest question I get, other than, hey, that's a nice Honda, is what the heck is that thing? So in this video, as I say, I want to present this car to you folks as a very viable alternative to the other, the excellent Toyota Prius Prime. And I'll get to the main reason why uh, at the end of this video. So let's get over the, uh, I call it the boring stuff, uh, stuff that has to be there on a practical car uh, that you want to ensure this car will have uh, as much as or better than the Prius. So this will be a very high level overview. I don't want to waste a lot of your folks' time with this, but um, let's just have a look at the car itself. I'll turn my camera around. Um, in a word, it's huge. Uh, which is awesome, uh, and it's a Honda, which means two of the things that I needed this car to be. Uh, one was uh, the presumption of reliability, and two, it's got to be big. You know, let's have a walk around it. It's uh, it's actually a few inches longer than um, a uh, an equivalent Honda Accord. Um, it's got a lot of visibility out of it, as you can see by the windows. Uh, it doesn't have the most attractive uh, rear wheel arch. I would say this is probably the uh, my the least attractive view of the car, but. Uh, Again, it's mostly practical, so you know beauty is sometimes takes a second, uh, uh, a sec like a backseat to the things that are more important to you. But otherwise, um, you know, practical sedan. If you're looking for one, it's huge, it's comfortable, it's quiet, uh, it's reliable. And the biggest reason why I bought this car over the plug-in Prius uh, is the increased in efficiency, which is what I'll dive into right now. So, why the clarity then? Uh, if it's pretty much on par with the Prius Prime and all the other alternatives, why this one? And I'm going to sum that up in one word and one word only, range. If you're going to bother to make uh, the bother and the expense rather, uh, to go into the plug-in hybrid world, why would you not choose the car that ultimately has the highest range on electric that you can get? And that's what this car has. Um, and it certainly did in 2018. There were no other real alternatives that had even double digit, double digit battery packs because this car happens to have a 17.6 kilowatt hour battery pack. And the Prius Prime, while excellent, I've owned several Priuses and I think they're great, um, has an 8.8 .8 kilowatt hour battery pack. So that gives you effectively, let's round it, let's round it out, half the range that this car has on EV. So as I said, I've owned this car for almost two years and I am at 46,212 kilometers. And of that, 35,000 has been on pure EV alone. Now, if I had half the, the battery pack capacity, I would have had gone about 17,000 kilometers on pure EV, just, you know, generally speaking, without any other measurement. Um, so another compelling con uh, consequence, however, of this car having the extended range and driven effectively twice as much on EV as I would have been able to do in the corresponding Prius Prime. What are, what are other aspects of that? And you could probably come up with them yourself, but the single biggest one outside of the per kilometer, uh, overall uh, per kilometer cost uh, being so low, which is obviously lower in this car than in a car with less range, uh, electric range, is the maintenance. Uh, this car has been able to live 75% of its life in electric only, which means all the internal combustion engine components are along for the ride, which means all of those uh, ultimately far more complex systems, uh, the maintenance on them and the costs associated with these, even unscheduled repairs, is postponed, if not frankly eliminated. This car, its engine, after this long, has about 10,000 kilometers on it, uh, give or take a few. Uh, it's up for its third oil change, which is almost laughable because the oil comes out perfectly clean. Because again, um, that's about every fourth, I mean, let's, let's round, that's about 3,300 three, three, uh, kilometers per oil change, which is like 2,000 miles. Who would do that? But 
what that means is, is A, this engine will last forever, and B, if there's anything else that might happen, uh, some failures, etc., etc., every EV kilometer I'm driving, I'm postponing that. So that is yet another reason why range is king, in my opinion, for when you're coming to choose to buy these cars. So uh, what I'll do, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I'll thank you for watching. The second thing is, is I'll probably just stop there. Uh, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below, good or bad. Uh, criticism as well. I, I love that. Um, I really just, I, you know, I share my enthusiasm for this car because I research the heck out of things. I'm sure we all do in this day and age. I arrived at this car and this car only. Uh, because of the very things that I've said. Sure, if it was some, again, like I say, some boutique uh, manufacturer, I probably would have thought twice because who knows. Um, but Honda, I have an S2000 that has 185,000 kilometers on it, still going strong, I love that car to death. Uh, Hondas to me have been very reliable, other than the oil dilution problem that you might have heard about. Thankfully, this car is not uh, subject to that, so that's great. Um, that's why I would do this. This car has no downside so far in all of my ownership and all of my experience. The only thing is, no one's ever heard of it. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video as well, is to try to draw some attention to this otherwise excellent car that no one has ever heard of. Uh, and every time I drive it around, people, they look at it and they think, oh, it's an Accord, fantastic. But then they go, wait a minute, no, it's not. What is that? And I can't believe Honda isn't selling these things like crazy, uh, especially to those folks who cross shop with other plug-in hybrid vehicles. And I think it's fantastic. So no, Honda doesn't pay me for this. I kind of wish they did because I, I do this on YouTube for nothing because I have no, I, I, you know, I'm certainly not at any threshold that would make any sense there, but I do it because I love, I, I share the enthusiasm for this car. So anyway, that's a long conclusion. Uh, thank you for watching this long, ladies and gentlemen. I wish you all very well. I wish you, I hope you're all warmer and uh, drier than I am up here in Canada. And please feel free to ask me any questions you like. So uh, with that, I wish you all the best. Thanks so much.